we're going to be talking about dynamic space planning inside of IBM Tririga. I'm currently logged in as a space planner or a space manager. I'm going to show you some of the steps we go into to load up the building and floor plan. And then maybe we want to talk about um, allocation of different units inside a company, such as finance or marketing, choosing where they're going to be sitting inside of your floor plan, doing some move management, and also determining maybe what's going to be reservable or non-reservable in our buildings. So to start, of course, we're prompted to choose property, building, and floor. I usually skip property and just go straight to building. So I'm going to go and focus on Charlotte, and we have quite a few here at um, IBM. I'm going to focus on maybe Charlotte Watson Center, and let's do the first floor today. So opening this up is going to open up the record, so it's going to be a floor record. We immediately see things that we might be a little bit familiar with if we've been using this for lease accounting or lease management before, or even just space management. So we see our floor plan down here, but we're going to jump over to our dynamic space planning tab, which is going to give us a bigger version of that floor plan, which then becomes interactive. Opening this up, you'll see immediately that we have some nice colors going on, on the screen. And immediately I wonder, you know, what do these colors mean? It looks like green might be workstation, but there's different colors of green. So we're able to open up the side menu here and see under space class, everything that's going on on this floor plan. Maybe we wanna close that down and see what is the organization is being charged to. Right now we have only conference services. So we're gonna go inside this demo and maybe allocate some to marketing or finance like I mentioned earlier. We have a few other options here to sort through, but I'm gonna switch back to space class just cause it's a little bit nicer to look at. This is gonna be our main menu to work with over here. We also have a menu on the side such as going into viewing some people so we can show who's on the floor right now. Maybe we wanna move some people around and we can toggle that to make that possible. We can also go in and toggle some spaces. So right now everything's colorful, but let's say that we're in a COVID situation and we wanna plan for some social distancing going on. Something like that is gonna be perfect for starting a new scenario. Right now we have up in this left-hand corner, our baseline floor plan. Creating a new scenario over here just means that maybe we wanna go into a phase one. Oh, that already exists. All right, so we're doing a phase one of COVID. Uh, spacing and what this means inside a scenario is that once I save this every kind of click and change I make is going to be saved and if we decide to stage these changes if we like this scenario that means that we can push it out to all the associated records so then without doing double the work instead of writing down I move John Doe from this seat to this seat the software will actually remember that and do the correct records if there's a move request the software will put that move request into action just by staging these changes. So let's save this. And again, now that this has started, everything I do on this floor plan from here forward can absolutely be saved and pushed out into a record. So first and foremost, I wanna show you what it looks like if we do spacing for this office. We can put in in inches right here, 72 inches for six feet, or we can have it calculate it by ourselves. The calculate factor I think is always at six feet. So if you watch, especially some of these um, clustered spaces of workstations, they're going to turn into a bit of a checkerboard pattern, just like so. So now all these darker colors um, are ones that says these should be available, um, and then the lighter colors should not be available. Now looking at this, I realize a lot of the offices have been turned off. I like to think that my employees are able to make choices to sit farther away when they're in off or in their in conference rooms. So I turned on this toggle spaces which means I can go in and say, actually, I do want some of these office to, um, not offices, conference rooms to stay open. And that can be possible with anything. Maybe there is a part of this um, marketing unit that has been vaccinated, so we can absolutely bring all of them back in in a little tighter formation here. The next thing I typically do when I'm working with a floor plan is I take advantage of the select spaces tool. Now, dropping this down, we can say we want to select any spaces, but right now I want to select all the unavailable spaces because I'm going to try to get the people out of the spaces they shouldn't be sitting in. So let's select all the unavailable spaces and do a window highlight of the entire building. And you'll notice that it's only selected, once again, the spaces that are one of those muter colors, not the bright um, active spaces. From here, I can edit my selections. And we have a few options. Um, for this case, I'm gonna remove people, but first I'm gonna show you what that looks like over here. 
So open up this move menu. If I go back now into remove people, you'll see that a bunch of them jump over into the remove people for the scenario. I can easily bring these back in and say, okay, you're sitting here now, you're gonna sit here now, and so on and so forth and reorganize my, um, my people, my employees. And this again is going to be, um, once I stage these changes up here, that will trigger the move management and let people know that they've been moved, not so they don't just come in the next day and say, hey, where's my seat, right? So that's one of the options with a selection. Another option is that we can select any space. Maybe we just want to focus on this area to start off with. And another edit selection option is to change the organization details. So if you remember on the side, it looks like that this wasn't assigned to any organization. So now we want to charge this to our marketing group. And so we can replace what's already there because nothing was there. And by doing so, you'll notice that you don't see an immediate change but that's still because we're on the space classes right here. So if we turn that off and look at the charge to organization, we now have the purple marketing showing up right here. I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a draft. I like the way this is going. So I'm gonna save this right here. And the next thing I wanna do, because this area is still highlighted and selected, I can go back to my selections, change the org one more time. And maybe I wanna add finance in here. What I'm thinking is that maybe marketing comes back on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and finance comes on Tuesday, Thursday, so they have a, a seat sharing. So instead of replacing marketing, I'm absolutely going to add it to the area. And it's going to give us this nice kind of half and half look, especially for this conference room as well. I could easily see this and say, you know what, that's a little busy. I don't want finance and marketing sharing desks. It's a little convoluted. I can go ahead and reload the last save point. It's going to revert us to what the last, obviously, save point was that we, that we enjoyed or what we liked. So from here is where I stage our changes, and that's where everything's going to be pushed off into the correct records, and it'll be updated without having to do kind of double the work of clicking through this floor plan and then remembering what we did and writing it down. So no more of that. It's going to be all automated from here on out, and it's going to be a lot easier and save a lot of time.